<laughs> the main event in our eyes for this podcast, but there's another <laughs> match afterwards. The champions. And th- this is its own question, actually. Uh, Ricky Steamboat and Shane Douglas versus the Hollywood Blondes, Brian Pillman and Steve Austin. Now, you are the unified tag team champions. So I was looking at them originally thinking, well, they're not the US belts, so what belts are they? But they're the NWA belts as well as the WCW belts. Yes. Uh, it's really, really confusing at this point, the old NWA, WCW thing. Do you remember winning the NWA belts? I do. Yes. They, I remember being uh, called the unified world tag team champions. And uh, of course we had to carry the belts back then. The company didn't cart them around. And so like one belt's a pain in the ass. Two's just a downright <laughs> rib, right? You know, you got all this extra weight in your bag. Uh, but this was, and we, at that moment in time, I don't think any of us knew that the NWA part was going to be jettisoned and it would just become WCW. Uh in large part because it had such a lineage and such a history to it uh, that that really lent gravitas to, to to any of the titles and to the promotion itself. So like when we're doing that, it was like our thought that this was going to be like an ongoing thing. Um, and I, I don't know how long or how soon after that, that they would drop the unified part of it, the NWA part. But that was, uh, I don't ever recall Ricky and I having that discussion as to did he know that they were going to do this and, could he, whether he was told or could figure it out, uh, I just think we we both felt that this was going to be, you know, the, this is the run. It's the World Unified Tag Team Champions. Now, uh, I've written half a page worth of review of the match. You don't need me to say anything about it. Because, <laughs> I mean, when was the last time you watched this? Was it 2025? Have you even ever watched it back? I think I watched it back around the time that it happened. Uh you know, we'd have people that, that you know would film in the old VCR tapes, film you know, tape stuff for you. I don't remember watching it since, only because I think like not long after that, I'd be in ECW and be coming this heel character. And uh, although I knew Ricky had taught me a huge amount uh, uh, about being upper card, in my naivete at that point, I didn't see the connection of what I was learning to being Ricky Steamboat's partner going to be helpful to me being this this ultra heel character uh but when i watch those matches back much like the one we did a few weeks ago uh you know i'm always in awe of, of steamer um just you just watch him and it's like, like for instance in that match watch how many times he teases in vastly different ways the hot tag Right to where then you find he's going to get it, he does it, and then there's this d- double take and a double trip around, and then a, a German suplex, a belly to back suplex, and they're both down, and then the hot tag comes to go into the. But he had teased it four or five, six times before that. So through seventy five percent of his heat, it was him continually trying to get to the tag, trying to get to the tag, which is what it is. It's tag team wrestling. You're getting your ass kicked. Your fresh partners on the apron. So even though you know you're not going to make the tag. He's that's the point. He's got to get over and make the tag. So he again, just just like a maestro playing an orchestra, you just watch how seamlessly he does this. And there's even times because like Brian could get a little bit unorthodox, you know, and, and Steve too in a different way. Uh, but you know, where he's almost crowding Ricky, he's not letting Ricky do his typical sell. He'd do something, get right back on him, and do something, get right back on him. And but even in the middle of that, you can see Steamboat still selling and you know, trying to get it in. And to me, that looks legit. You know, if, if you were trying to beat this legend, you'd stand on like stink on shit. Right. And, uh, yeah. And, and they do that, uh, both of them. Uh, but the, the, just the, the myriad of ways that Ricky feigns making the hot tag without making the hot tag. And by the way, each time he does that, the crowd gets <laughs> a little, a little bit, a little bit more. It's just doing this each one pulling that energy up just ever so slightly higher. And then to where finally, boom, gets it. Now the place blows. Credit Steamboat. for all, From the three of us, that was all Steamer. Um, and, you know, being his partner was easy once you, you know, you got used to those little things that he would do like that. Because, you know, if you notice, like on the first couple, I'm not really working the apron. Like, come on, come on, you're getting closer, you're getting closer. But I know what he's doing. In that moment in time, I'm looking back and I, I forget, but I'm looking, okay, this is why I'm not working the apron. See, I'm, I'm quiet back there and doing very little. But then when he gets closer to him, 
you'll see me start to bang because I know it's coming then. And, uh, you know, again, credit Steamboat with that. Uh, on Brian and Steve's work, there's, uh, as great heels, there, especially in tag team matches, you get the opportunities to get the upper hand. And today we see it as, as this quadrennial thing, right? So we're going to have a shine at the beginning. We're going to have a heat. We're going to have a comeback. And then we're going to have a go home. And boom, 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 boom. So I've just told you how many times Steamboat teases the tag. But watch how many times during whether it's our shine or our heat uh, uh, comeback. You know, Brian at the one point gives me the shoulder to cut me off, goes to jump in. I power slam him out of that false count. One, two, here comes uh, and uh, you know, feeds right in off the tag. Watch off of that tag. Uh, Brian makes it over to his corner, makes the tag. Steve comes in. I'm still down on the mat. For a millisecond, you think he's rushing me. He's going a little bit too fast. But watch where he positions himself as he comes to the ropes right into the drop toe hold. And as he takes the face bump down, watch what he does with his left arm. He hits the mat, then he goes, because he knows the arm bar's coming, right? And it's just, it's not a telegraph. It's not like so obvious what he's doing. It, it's almost a little boom down on his face, arms out, grab the arm bar. Uh, it's just putting everything where it needs to be. That ring generalship that for a baby face makes it super duper easy. And uh, when you watch their positioning, because a lot of those stuff, especially with Steamboat, was always timing and spacing. And, uh, you know, when Steamer finally makes the go over, the bell of the back, and then there's the, the pause, the pause, the pause. He comes up almost half to the wrong corner, makes the tag, perfect spacing. And each time, watch the audience as he's doing this. Each time the crowd's coming a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And then when he starts going to the, to the other side, one of the guys in the audience does this. Shit, he's going to the wrong corner, Right. That's when you know you got him. You got you got that fish right on the hook, just yanked it in, into their jaw. And uh, Brian and Steve coming in, they both have unorthodox styles. Uh, Brian was a lot more just throw it out there, throw it out there, rush you, maybe maybe pinch you a bit at points. But even in that, it, it gave it an air of legitimacy because this is what if we were really champions, uh, this is what you would be doing. You know, if you were fresh and you're in there, you'd be pushing it and rushing it and getting your stuff as much as you can. But in the middle of all that, Brian will set up some place where he gets caught with a power slam coming from inside or outside. Steve comes in, steps right into the top, the, the drop toe hold, feeds his arm up, boom. And the whole time, like Steve's moving his legs, he looks really unorthodox. But in each of those things he's doing, he's putting himself right in the perfect positions to be the shortest route between two points. And, you know, when you watch that as a performer, you're just watching like, mm, man, impressive. Just really, really good stuff. By the way, you said about the promo prior and Steve sitting there, you know, the, you know, the big old ding, ding, you know, you almost see the tooth gleam, like in the, you know, the little star ging you know, on his teeth. That was Steve doing his handsome Steve, right? <laughs> be the handsome guy sitting here and say nothing. Uh, just, you know, good, good memories of working with those guys. And then when you watch it back, like, you know, even like I said about those hot tag things earlier, you can see it. Like, watch Brian and Steve. Like, okay, you know what Steamboat's going to do. I just described it. But watch them. It looks like the entire time they're trying to keep him from tagging. And even as it gets close, everything looks like it fits right into place. The puzzle fits right together. There's no like, okay, where did this come from? Uh, why would they do that? Um, everything you're watching those guys do is perfect positioning, perfect timing. And even where it looks a little bit uh, unorthodox or cattywampus, they're always in the right place. They always know where their partner is. They all, they, you know, today you'll see a baby face, you know, he'll bump a baby face and then they'll turn around and jaw jack the audience. Meanwhile, the baby face is two feet from his corner. Why does he just reach up and tag? Why does the partner just reach in and tag the shoulder? Something, uh, the air of legitimacy to it. And, and the reason is because we talked about it earlier and that's not where I'm supposed to tag you. Uh, you know, it's like when you're playing golf, it's play it where it lays. You don't get to move the ball where you want to. And the same thing here. But when you're with two heels that can so perfectly position themselves, when I, we, there's the one spot where uh, Steve gets on me, shoots me in and I, do the, the jump and the blind throw my back into him. 
come off like a turn like a cross body block, but I don't turn. It's just into the turnbuckle and push straight back out. You're completely blind to where your opponent is. He, he might be in the other corner for all you know. There was never a time I could, we did it almost nightly. There was never a time I did that move with Steve Austin that I thought to myself, Oh, I hope he's there. I hope he's there. I hope he's there. He was always there. He was always right where he needed to be. And boy, when you, like I said, as a baby face, we're going to ring with guys like that. It's taking candy from babies, right? I mean, it's just go out and do it. They're going to be there. Um, you know, and steamboat and I, uh, to our credit, I, I hate to say it like this because it sounds like I'm being like, you know, weren't we great um it, it, it's not that but i'm watching it and it you can almost see the reverence i have for ricky but then like when it gets real you know we're doing the forearm bumps and and you know holding our own with these guys uh i when i'm watching it anyway I, there's no time i get a feeling like these guys aren't really a team like they, they feel like a team just those s- s- meaningless in and outs Tag in on the arm, take it, tag back in, come off the top on the arm, tag, come back and kick the arm. It's nothing. You're just doom, 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 in and out, in and out, in and out. But it gives the fans the feel, oh, these guys are a well-oiled machine, right? They're, they're you know, these guys know what they're doing. Um, and uh, I, I think for all four of us to give the pat on the back to all four of us is when you watch the finish of that match at no time do you walk away from it and go, ah, I was good up to this point or this was a little weak. Everything comes across and it's digestible. Like everything makes sense and it's, and it fits right in there. And again, I, I credit Ricky's. I had a great, a great lead character to play off of. And I had two incredible heels that I, I don't think it's happenstance that Steve Austin went on to be like one of the iconic faces in wrestling. I think if Brian not died, he, he would have been right there alongside him. He'd had a monster run somewhere. Those guys were great, great heels, and they had fun doing it. They looked like they're having fun doing it, and, and that that bleeds off. I I think I can pronounce it a lot better than say an average fan could. But I think the fans, why when you watch the audience, there's nobody in there like looking at their watch or bored or something. the audience is into it. And, and each of the things that Steamboat is laying out, the false tags and the the feigning getting to the corner each time, the crowd is <laughs> oh, and the guy doing this and they're into it. And when the final hot tag finally does come, there's the pop. That's the Garrett. That's the that's the validation that you had them where you thought you had them, that you wanted to have them. And for me, Brian and Steve, at that uh, inception points of our rise to, in, the, in the main event, we had perhaps the greatest teacher in wrestling teaching us. So, uh, you know, it's uh, we you know in hindsight, any wrestling fan can say, well, the franchise was big in ECW. Boy, Steve Austin became that huge character, and Brian Pillman, everybody would believe, would have been in any of those roles. Uh, and you look at it, and you can see like a lot of that learning was taking place right there in matches like that on a night to night basis. You know, again, credit the Steamboat, uh, credit to Steamboat and Steamer. Incredible. Uh, with that being said, Shane Douglas and Ricky Steamboat via DQ win 13 minutes 39 because uh, Austin, okay, well, I think it was Austin. I've got so many lights in my face now that I like I can't <laughs> even read my own writing here. But uh, yeah, Austin goes to the floor, gets the tag belt, and wipes you out for the disqualification. Pillman and Austin continue to uh, attack you. You're busted wide open. Then uh, Pillman whips Steamboat a couple of times really hard. It looks oh. like as well with the tag team belt uh, before yes. the baby faces make the save. Uh, that didn't look like was that oh. was that even planned? Because it just looked like Pillman just decided to take advantage of that very very quickly and then escape. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't believe for a second that Brian meant to hurt him. I, I just don't think he thought. He's like, oh, I got the belt, I should whip him with it, right? Mm. And not realizing or understanding there's a metal plate on the, there's a metal edge on the end of those belts uh, that, and you can see Ricky, like, really, like, you don't see him Ricky Steamboat sell it. It's just like, oh, and a tense, and it looks right up at Brian, right? Uh, but it's funny how you said that because as we were watching last night, Moose, popped on that like, oh you know because he knows he, he knows what a belt looks like and how how it is and he knows ricky uh you know but again like those types of things and there and there were times i think i told you before in, in joe lewis arena where they were supposed to afterwards we beat them they beat us down afterwards they're supposed to have the belts above us and like real cockily lay them on our chests and instead they both get wrapped up in this and they both toss them just haphazardly with the one chipped Ricky's tooth and busted my lip. 
and Ricky, who is <laughs> the nicest guy in wrestling, right? Uh, I think this is the only time I'd ever seen him in something wrestling related. <laughs> Nothing, enough said about that. Uh, <laughs> that he blew. Uh, they, they it literally was as Rick as uh, Brian and Steve were through the ropes and going down. Rick, now we're supposed to be laying there selling, right? Rick looks at me, goes, let's go, partner, and he jumps up, and we're literally like eight feet behind them. And I'm behind Steamboat. We get into that dressing room, and Steamer just laid into them. Of course, he's pissed. Chipped his tooth, busted my lip. We're laying there prone for you. And, uh, again, I don't think that Brian or Steve did it intentionally. I think they were just so wrapped up in character. Uh, and I think that's the same thing that happened with the, the belt whipping last night. But, I, you know, watching it, like, that had to hurt.